Good morning. I'm Dolores Fitch, a member of your board of trustees. Welcome to you and old friends and new. Young and seasoned, you are an essential part of our celebration today. Whether today is your first or your thousandth Sunday in our midst, we are stronger because you are with us. Whether you join us in person or online, we are glad you're here. We are one people of many beliefs, many origins, sexualities, and genders. We are all growing, all learning, all loved, just as you are. You are welcome here. As we do each week and as we begin our gathering, I respectfully acknowledge that I speak to you today from occupied Puyallup and Coast Salish ancestral lands. I pay respects to elders past, past and present and extend that respect to their descendants and all indigenous people. We continue to join you in multi-platform mode. You'll see some of us in the sanctuary and others zooming in online. For those meeting in person today, we invite you to join us for coffee time following the service. Red mugs are for visitors who would like to chat. For those in person, this facility is equipped with hearing assistance systems. Devices are available on the table at the back of the sanctuary. We're in the midst of transition and we need to help make this a smooth ride. We continue to need volunteers to teach RE, be celebrants for Sunday service, and serve as chat chaplains online, host on Zoom. Please see Chrissy Kim or email board at tahomauu.com to sign up and help volunteer. Would you like to take part in helping Tacoma UU revitalize our online presence? We are creating a limited team task force to imagine and restructure our website as we prepare to move to a new hosting platform. If you're interested in being a part of this vital work, you can reach out to our minister, Reverend Crystal, at minister at tahomauu.com. As always, details for our upcoming services can be found on our website, or in the e-news. Next week's our service will be in collaboration with the RE program and their level guide us curriculum. Is that true? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> Could be wrong. My lips are moving. Now let us join together in worship. And now it's the gong show.
<clears throat> I am Reverend Crystal Zerfoss, and I use she, her pronouns. I am a short, fat, white woman with short, dirty blonde hair, and I'm wearing a black robe with a white stole with a rainbow wave pattern on it. Our opening words this morning come from Daniel Budd. Come, come to this place, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of learning, all seekers after what is true, all who seek a community of compassion and diversity. Come, come to this place, whoever you are, though you've broken your vows a thousand times and you're too busy and you don't have the time. Come, come to this place where a love we do not make surrounds us and lifts us and nurtures us. Come to this place, whoever you are. Ours is not a community of despair, but of hope, not a place of judging, but of thanksgiving, not a place of certainty, but of searching. Come, come to this place, whoever you are. Come, yet again, come. Now, let us worship together. This morning, our chalice lighter is Marianne Lyman. And for those of you joining online, I invite you to light your own chalice as we kindle the flame of our collective chalice here in the sanctuary. Please join me in the chalice lighting words from the Reverend Ken Jones. And the words will be on the screen. We light this chalice. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We light this chalice in deep respect for the mystery and holiness of life, in honor and gratitude for those who have gone before, with love and compassion for those who dwell among us, and with hope and faith for the generations to come. Our opening hymn is number 188 in the gray hymnal, Come, Come, Whoever You Are. We are going to sing it one time in unison and then uh, twice as a round. This side will follow me, part one, and this side will be part two and follow Reverend Crystal and rise as you are able. <laughs> At this time, I would love to invite our young folks, anyone who's young at heart, our children, come on up for our time for all ages. We've got someone right up front. I love your hat. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Ooh. 
Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, this week has been a long week for me. I don't know about you. Maybe that's just how it goes sometimes. Maybe you've been getting ready for school. Is anybody getting ready for school? Yeah. Do you have a bunch of chores to do at home? Mm, Maybe some. This week, I had work, and I had meetings, and I had chores, and I still got to take care of my cat, Ella. All of that busyness meant that I didn't have time to finish writing my message for the Time for All Ages this morning, though. Whoops. (laughs) I know it's my job, but I'm hoping you all can help me out. Will you help me finish writing it? Okay. All right. Excellent. This is what we'll do. Have any of you ever played Mad Libs before? Yeah? Oh, oh, I see some hands out there, too. You've never played Mad Libs? You know what it is? You know what Mad Libs are? Okay. I will explain it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you for some words to help me finish the story. I have most of it ready, but there are some words missing. So here's what I need. Let me see if I can do this. I need some numbers. Shout out some numbers for me. Uh, 365. 365. One million. Sixty-five. How about some other one? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Oh, wait. I need one more. One. Three. Three. All right. All right. How about some colors? Red. All right. Teal. Oh, my gosh. Teal. Uh, yeah. Teal. Teal. What would you say back there? Pink. Black. Oh, I like it. Um, uh, what was the last one? We said black. Magenta. Oh, magenta. All right. <laughs> Um, how about some animals? Uh, what? Fox, a no cat? Uh, okay, wait, I gotta, find, I gotta find my animals here. What are my animals? Pink, okay. Yeah, yeah. Zebra, uh, g- giraffe, and what was another one? Snake. Snake. Axolotl. Axolotl? Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> is. Is this a character or is it a real animal? It's a real it's animal. A it's a real animal. Axolotl. I've got to Google that later. Okay. Now, now what we need is we need some nouns. These are like things and people and places. It's like a thing or like a, like a cloud or your dad. Okay. (laughs) Broccoli. A foot. I got tree. How about some more nouns? Candle. How about somebody out there? A spoon. A Did you say hook? A book. A Did you say a leaf? A leaf. Okay. The last thing I need are I need some verbs. These are action words like run or fly or something. Uh, sweep. Sweep. Ooh, nice. Sweep. Running. Oh, you said sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like sweep too. What would you say? Running. Um, let me put that down here. Shoe polishing. Shoe polishing. <laughs> uh, I think y'all know how to do this. Rolling. What? Um, you said rolling. Flying. Uh, okay. Oh my goodness, y'all are so good. Okay, all right. I think we have our story. So thank you all for helping. Y'all really got into this. All right. Let's see how it turned out. Our message this morning is entitled "Exactly as You Are." You are loved. You are loved exactly as you are. There is nothing you have to do or say or believe to make you lovable. You are loved already. Whether you are 365 years old or 1 million, you are loved. If you have purple hair or curly red hair or no hair at all, you are loved. (laughs) All right now. Are you 24 feet tall? Or maybe you have 65 shiny teal teeth? Do you sleep for a living? (laughs) Or sweep for a living? (laughs) Or shoe polish around every chance you get? You know what? You are loved exactly as you are. Maybe you wear trees on your wrists like bracelets. Or you draw pictures with multicolored broccoli. Maybe you run delicious meals with lots of fresh dads and volunteer your time helping feet. 
all the same, you are loved. Even if you forgot to read your candle or pay your spoon, you are, you guessed it, you're loved. Maybe you're someone who takes your pet cat to the park to play, or you get up really early in the morning to feed your zebra. And when you go to bed at night, you snuggle up with your pink giraffe. All of you are loved. No matter what your family looks like, or where you live, or how many books you have, you are loved. I think there's a theme here. You have a lot of books, you said? You have a pink giraffe? Oh, themed. Oh, okay, okay. Whew. Maybe you are someone who makes mistakes, and sometimes you hurt other people's feelings. Maybe sometimes you do things you wish you didn't do. But you know what? You're still loved. We have the opportunity to choose love, and when we make mistakes, make mistakes, to always come back to a place of loving. No matter how many times you roll leaves, you are love. Y'all helped me with this. So why are we saying the same thing over and over again? Well, that's because in our world, we don't hear this message enough. We hear messages that tell us that we aren't good enough or that we're broken in some way. Sometimes other people tell us that we have to act a certain way or believe a certain way to be lovable. But the truth is, you are already loved. You don't have to do anything to make yourself lovable. You are lovable exactly as you are. You don't have to polish shoes. <laughs> so this week, as you go about your day-to-day -day life, I want you to remember this important message from our story we created this morning, that no matter what black axolotl, is that how you pronounce it? Axolotl, you cuddle with, or if you're three feet tall, you are loved. You are loved. Will you say it with me? You are loved. Now I want you to say, I am loved. Everybody. I am loved. Excellent. That's right, friends. You are loved exactly as you are. Thank you for helping me with the story this morning. Let us please rise and we'll send you all out to your classes. Please join me in singing our, our children out. That was We offer our gratitude for gifts freely given with the words from Reverend Bill Graves. Could I have some ushers come forward, please?
Please join me in our dedication. And the words will appear shortly there. Oh, close. There we go. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings to the work of this congregation, weaving a tapestry of love we call community, both within and beyond these walls. Our meditation hymn is number 18 in the gray hymnal, What Wondrous Love. reading this morning is entitled The Invitation by Uriah Mountain Dreamer. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow, if you have been opened by life's betrayals, or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own. If you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, to be realistic, to remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself if you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul. If you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy, I want to know if you can see beauty even when it is not pretty every day. And if you can source your own life from its presence, I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine and still stand at the edge of the lake and shout to the silver of the full moon, yes. It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you make. 
I want to know if you can get up after the night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done to feed the children. It doesn't interest me who you know or how you came to be here. I want to know if you will stand in the center of the fire with me and not shirk back. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I want to know what sustains you from the inside when all else falls away. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. Today's message is based on a quote from Jalil Adin Muhammad Rumi, the 13th century Islamic scholar and Sufi poet. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Rumi, who was born in what is now Afghanistan, settled in Konya in present-day Turkey. His father was a preacher and religious scholar who introduced Rumi to Sufism. Rumi studied the traditional legal codes of Sunni Islam in Syria, and along with writing his poetry, he served as a seminary teacher. Rumi used the Quran, Hadiths, and religion in an explorative way often challenging conventional readings, writes Rosina Ali. He melded the religious teachings and, <coughs> excuse me. He melded the religious teachings of traditional Islam with the mystical wanderings of Sufism. Moving toward a deeper understanding of love, seeking that direct connection with God, engaging truth in all its forms. Rumi's words touch millions still today and encourage us along our own path. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself you have built against it. <clears throat> Perhaps you've heard this particular quote before. It's quite beautiful and it's a message, its message is an important one. You don't have to create something new. You don't have to go out of your way to get love to come to you. There's no need to work for love. You are already loved. Excuse me, <laughs> something is really caught in my throat. <laughs> <sighs> love is present here and now. Love is holding you, you know, enveloping you. You don't have to do anything to make that so. It already is. The work that Rumi tells us is ours is to figure out what's stopping us from believing that, from acknowledging that love, from embracing that love, from relishing in the fact that we are already beloved. Rumi writes, if you knew yourself for even one moment, if you could just glimpse your most beautiful face, maybe you wouldn't slumber so deeply in that house of clay. Why not move into your house of joy and shine into every crevice? For you are the secret treasure bearer and always have been, didn't you know? He's telling us that we're already loved, that love is a given. We don't have to go searching for it. It's right here with us already. So the task is that we are to find the barriers to love, those things that get in the way of our knowing that we are beloved and identify them, understand them, and ultimately move past them. What gets in your way of love? What stops you from fully embracing 
loves gifts? What keeps you from knowing deep in your soul that you are beloved? I'm still relatively new here. <laughs> and you all are getting to know me as I'm getting to know you. So I want to share a little bit of my story as it relates to this question of the barriers to love. When I was a kid, I didn't believe I was worthy of love. I grew up influenced by people and institutions that taught me that I was sinful and broken, and that although it was possible for God to love me, God wouldn't unless I did certain things to earn that love. I always fell short of doing those things the right way. Nothing I tried could convince me that I was enough. I internalized the societal and religious and even familial messages that led me to the conclusion that I was not worthy of love. Even when I came out in young adulthood, that reconciliation with my identity did not lead me to self-love. I was 35 years old before I began loving myself. 35. And that was just the start of the undoing. You might be able to tell now that I'm not 70 yet. I hope to get there one day. But because of that, that means that I've spent more of my life not loving myself than I have loving myself. This whole thing who am and knowing I'm worthy of love is still somewhat new to me. I'm still figuring out how it feels in this skin of mine, how to love into the doubts that pop up from time to time, what it means for the wider implications of my life and my life's purpose, how it plays out in my relationships and the love I share with other people. It's a process of learning and unlearning simultaneously. And this journey for me didn't begin until my 30s. It's something I'll be engaging in the rest of my life. It doesn't stop. My task is not to seek for love, but to seek and find all of the barriers within myself that I have built against it. Now, I don't know about you, but my barriers to love have been related to fear. I was afraid that I was innately unlovable and that I was causing my separation from God my, by my own actions. I feared being unworthy of love. And if by some miracle someone did love me, I feared that I might let them down and they'd stop loving me. These fears were my barriers to self-love and frankly, to understanding love at all. Bob Conlon shared in the World Game Changers podcast an episode entitled, My Favorite Quote About Love, that for him, these barriers are usually created as a result of feeling the need to protect himself, to build a wall around himself and decrease the amount of vulnerability that he offers others. He goes on to say that his fear manifests as, what am I not going to get? Or what are you going to take away from me? When are you going to stop loving me? Or when are you going to leave me? Do any of those questions sound familiar? Your barriers to love may look a little different and come in different forms. Perhaps yours is anger, pain, defensiveness, indignation, shame. What barriers can you think of that hold you back, that get in your way of fully loving yourself, of truly embracing your own belovedness? As you think about those barriers, 
and what comes up for you, I want to offer this additional piece of wisdom from Rumi. Did you know that this quote so often used to help us reflect in this way is actually missing a key part? If you look up the translation in English, you'll likely find a gazillion references to it as I shared it before. But here is the complete quote. See if you notice the difference. Your task is not seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it and embrace them. And embrace them. Those are the words that are so often left off this famous quotation. And embrace them. Rumi instructs us to find all the barriers within ourselves that we have built against love and to embrace them. That changes the task at hand, doesn't it? it, it at least it adds to it. Not only are you supposed to figure out what's keeping you from a fuller understanding of love, but when you figure out what that is, you're supposed to embrace it. Embrace your fear embrace your anger, embrace your shame, embrace your hurt. That's some big stuff. That's going to require some work. It's going to require some exploration of your shadow elements, some deep dives into your own psychology. It's going to challenge your conditioning. And there's probably going to be some resistance within you that comes up when you do this. It may feel like an internal tug of war. Here are these barriers. I've discovered what they are. I just want them to go away so I can love. But wait, is there more to it than that? Maybe they're serving some kind of purpose in my life. Maybe they are there to teach me something about myself, something about my faith. Maybe in the process of discovering these barriers, I've unlocked some deeper secrets about love and how to live in and share love more fully. Perhaps exploring why you have these barriers will take you deeper still. Bob Conlon invites us to ponder the question, how might these barriers actually be serving me? Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it and embrace them. I'll tell you that although I love myself today, that doesn't mean I have everything figured out. In my own explanation of the barriers I have to love my fear of being unworthy, my fear of not being enough, my fear of letting others down. As I've learned what these fears are, what these barriers are, I've begun leaning into those areas more. I recognize them as sensitive spots, and I do embrace them as part of who I am and who I have been. I pour love into those places within me where fear resides. And I accept that these fears, these barriers, will continue to pop up throughout my life. I am continually learning and unlearning. And I know now that I don't have to shy away from those parts of myself that made it impossible for a teenage crystal to love herself. I can welcome those fears in, question them, hold on to what serves me in them, and release the parts that get in the way. My ongoing journey of looking for barriers to love within myself, of understanding them and growing in more love, consists of this ongoing process. Rumi offers... Let your teacher be love itself. So I invite you, friends, 
into this process of discovery, into learning and unlearning those things about yourself that get in the way of loving. Search for the barriers within you, and upon discovering what they are, hold them close as you figure out their purpose. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it and embrace them. Amen and blessed be. With love as our guide and as our container, may we set our intention to discover love within ourselves and explore the ways such barriers may be serving us. Friends, I invite you to rise in body and or in spirit and join in singing our closing hymn, number six in our gray hymnal, just as long as I have breath. Number six, the words will appear on the screen. Will you please join me in releasing the flame of our chalice with these words from Reverend Elizabeth Sell Jones. I'll go ahead and do the benediction first. Thank you for your patience. I'm learning the new system here. Friends, you are a gift. I'm so glad that you are you, exactly as you are. You are whole and holy and beloved. Divine and sacred, go forth in peace. Make love manifest in all you do. 
Amen and blessed be. Now, please join me as we release the flame of our chalice with these words. <laughs> we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Friends, I invite you to rise in body and or in spirit and join in our closing blessing song. And if you know the motions, feel free to do them. <laughs> <laughs>